Hi. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you a skill that we don't learn. We learn it as something really advanced, but it's fundamental. It's a prerequisite for being able to improvise and solo. And nobody tells you this because it's like once we get to this point of learning something like this, we're already very advanced players and uh, what we really should be doing is learning this first before we look into uh, learning other scale shape than just the one the first position the minor pentatonic we should be learning this you know the minor pentatonic and then this because this skill will enable you to create an unending amount of variety using very few notes and that makes it boring to some people like Ugh, you know, show me some licks show me something interesting but this skill will make anything you learn a uh, hundred times more valuable than just being able to play that one lick or that one sequence the soloing you just heard has a lot of that and it's called the concept is called rhythmic displacement <laughs> it sounds really boring academic but it's very practical and what I just played here was just a some part of a riff from Steve Vai's Attitude Song and it really is a, an amazing exercise in rhythm rhythmic displacement but apart from analyzing that and teaching you how to play it I will give you another strategy that can can make you master this area this is something that every master improviser is a master of because if you're not you cannot improvise freely you cannot take your first position minor pentatonic and your licks and your sequences and make sense Sim it's not possible you will keep making mistakes and stumble all the time because you lose your place rhythmically so the first thing and what is it what is just to to not have you be curious uh, for the entire video what is it well it's simply a matter of being able to take uh, this is my metronome here let me turn it up just a little bit so it's a matter of being able to take something and then place it at different places in the bar so if I can go I can go see if I can get some Right, two notes from the A minor pentatonic. I'm playing the fifth and the seventh fret on the G string. Let me just do it on the G string instead. Right, that's super boring to listen to. Imagine a whole solo that sounds like this. But if I start placing those two notes at different uh, places in the bar, then the two notes kind of sounds differently. So I can go. Um, See, suddenly I have variety and I'm just playing the same two notes. And, and the reason why we don't see this is because we often focus on the notes because that's the obvious, very almost visible part of music, right? It's the notes. And we forget that it, the body listens for the rhythm, right? And your ears listen for, for the notes. And if you can focus on the rhythm, then you can progress 10 times faster. And I mean that. I've seen people playing for 10, 20, 30 years and they don't understand why the skills they have do not come together into something meaningful. They feel insecure, they feel scrambling, and they got way more technical ability than they need to produce uh, the stuff that they want to produce. And their main challenge is rhythm. So point number one here before we start is you need to master rhythm. What does that mean? That means that from now on, from this day, you become very critical towards anything you play where you cannot keep the pulse. If you cannot tap your foot to what you play, then it's garbage. It's crap. It's not worth listening to. No notes that you play that are not connected to that beat. And what does that mean? It means that everything, if I go right I got my 16 notes subdivisions we call it one two three four one two so every beat in the bar is subdivided into four little beats right one two three four one two three four right 
And once I can say them, that's the first level. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, that's pretty good. And I can tap my foot, right? Let me tap this one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But then the next level is to be able to go take some of them, right? And leave out others. And you can leave out random beats of, of the uh, 16th notes. The reason why there's 16 is because we've got four pulse speeds per bar. One, two, one, two, three, Four. And then we, we subdivided that bar into 16 notes, which is four times four. So one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Are you bored now? You shouldn't be, because this is a miraculous area. It takes only 5% of your uh, practice time. If this is all you think, all the things you should practice, right, to, to, to do what you want to do, then 5% of that time-wise, the time you spend on it, is rhythm. The 95% is all the techniques and the alternate picking and the hammer-ons and pull-offs and the scales and the courts and the barpeggios, right? And 5% of it is rhythm. So if you master this area, you can make a huge difference in anything else you learn. You can really use it now. So you got one, two, three, four, one, two, three. That's the first level, right? Then to take some of the beats and some not, you can go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, ba da 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 Da, 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 da. Oh, sorry, I changed the subdivision there. Da, 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 da. Oh, triplets again. Shame on me. Da, 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 da. I can't, I can't do it. So I can't stick with the 16 notes. But, but that's, it's such a simple piece of math, right? You got four beats for every pulse. You have, you tap your foot and you're able to hit any one of these 16 notes in the bar and leave out others. And the way to do that on guitar is simply to keep, we got an advantage here because we got a rhythm thing going on that you don't have on the trumpet, for instance, right? So I can go, I can have my rhythm there. One, two, three, four, one. And I can just do this and then I can take a single note and mute all the others with my first finger and my second finger, take a note with my third finger, and then I can press down on that note in the seventh fret on the G string. Right, as I tap my foot, if you lose the ability to tap your foot, you are out of it. You're not playing music anymore, you're making noises, right? Um, but so what is rhythmic displacement in this? It is the ability to play more than just one note and place it anywhere in the bar. It is to be able to place two notes in the beginning, right? Instead of playing, instead of playing. Right, then you can play. So you basically play the same thing over and over again, but you just place it on different ones of these 16 notes. And the first exercise that's very real and very easy to do is to just go listen to Steve Vai's Attitude Song. Because why do we want to listen to something like, why do we, if I, if I told you that, oh yeah man, I got a cool idea for a song, it's, the riff sounds like this. Oh, that's genius, Klaus. That's amazing. Let's, you know, let's start out the band, you know, switch on the bass amplifier, find my drumstick so we can start playing your amazing riff. So this is how it sounds. If I play it, just right on. So, because it's the same thing we hear every single time. But if I displace it in the bar, so I put and this is a cool exercise. You can do this with a lot. I put this, I could go down, 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 right? And then I have my 16 notes running here, right? In my hand. And I go down, 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 right? And this is the same three every time. So I'm playing a, a, a power chord, uh, fifth fret, first finger, E string, low E string. And then I have my uh, third finger in the seventh fret on the uh, A string. And then I bar over to the D string as well. And I play that chromatically down, right? So I can go, and then I take two strokes. So I go, so I go, ba, ba, ba. See, up, down, right? So uh, down, 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 up, down. That's muted. And then the next thing 
it's upstrokes all the way, right? Down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 up, up, up. So this doesn't fit. It doesn't fit the, the, the music or, or the, the main pulse. Therefore, I displace the same three notes. So if you have the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 down, down. That's pretty easy, but if you start having that pulse of the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, then you get into trouble pretty soon. And the way out of this, this is not some magical skill that, uh, th that you know, okay, he can do one thing with his leg, that's just tapping, and then he does a completely different thing with his hands. That's not what goes on. It's a coordination. It's a coordinated effort that's uh, very easy to learn, actually. It takes a little time, but it's very logical. So let's look at what you do. That's what drummers does as well. We take, okay, the first beat is the, 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 the bass drum, and it's the hi-hat. Okay, the next beat is just the hi-hat. Okay, the next beat is the snare drum and the hi-hat. So it goes, and then, bah, right? And then we have our lonely snare drum, just or, or hi hat. That's it. So we go, ba, right? Ba, There we got a rhythm. But it's learned as little frames of a movie. It's not like you can do one thing with your feet and the other with your hands. It doesn't happen. So if we want to learn this, it's a good help to have the up and down movement on the guitar. So I recommend that you that you do that. But we can also practice it on the bus. And as with everything else, if you can learn just this rhythm, this rhythmic displacement, uh, displacement, displacement exercise, and you can master it to the point where you can go ba da 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 or ba da 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 ba da 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 right? If you can, if it becomes like easy as breathing in and breathing out, then you have won eighty percent of the game. That's how far you come by mastering one thing only, because then it becomes so much easier to master every single kind of rhythmic displacement exercise or lick that you can come up with. So instead of learning all kinds of exercises, just learn this Steve Vai's attitude song. And if you can learn this to the point where it's easy as breathing in and out, everything will become easy. That's the power of mastery. Go directly for your goal instead of scattering your efforts across all kinds of stuff all the time, right? So let's analyze this. So I go ba, da, da. Can you do that? You say ba, da, da. You say three ba, da, da, right? And then you, you, you snap your fingers or you stomp your foot at the first and the last. Ba, da, da, right? Ba, da, da, right? So we practice that. And if, again, mastery, can you master that? How quickly can you master that? Ba da da, ba da da, ba da da, ba da da. That's pretty easy, right? Ten minutes, perhaps. Okay, so that's mastery because we we focus on that before we move on. Let's take the next. Ba da da, ba da da. Okay, ba da da. It comes right after the first and the last. So ba da da, and then ba. Da, ba, oh, ba, da, da, ba, da, da, right? Ba, da, da, ba, da, da, ba, da, da, right? So remember how gold this is when you sit and do these little exercises and look like, you know, you should have some help. So let's look at the next one. Now we stop the video and then loop this part. So the first two, ba da 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 da, ba da da, ba da da, right? Ba da 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 da, ba da da. So the next one, you just have to snap on two or your foot. Ba so ba da da, ba da da, ba da da. That's it. So you have the on 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 in the middle of the three, right? Ba da 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 ba da da ba da da ba da da, right? One more. We're almost there. 
we're almost through to the exercise that will give you 80% of this equation and, and, and have all your other skills come to fruition when you're solo. So ba da 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 ba da da ba. Oh, we had a snap just before one now. Ba da 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 ba da da ba da da. Right? Ba da 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 ba da da ba da da. Right? So now we have one between two and three. Ba da da. And one before one. So it says ba da da. 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 Right? Ba da da. Ba da da. Ba da da. Ba da da. And then we're full circle because now we hit one again. Ba da da. Right? So ba da da, ba da da, ba da da, ba da da. And if you stop the video and take all these little entities and say, where is the clap? Where's the snap? Where's my foot? And you practice one in a loop. And in the beginning, it, it, it demands all of your focus. You feel like an idiot because you're struggling to just do the da da da, right? The most basic stuff in the world. It's like, da, and, and, and it seems uh, like this is going to take forever. But if you keep it at a level where it's not that hard, so you slow down and say, okay, I snap my fingers. Ba, da, da. Okay. Ba, da, da. That was it. You know, before one, between two and three. Okay. Ba. No, sorry. This first. Ba. Da. Da. And then similar, you think about it. You analyze it. As you do it, everything is, you know, you're not doing anything rhythmically. You're just thinking, okay, stand my fingers. Ba. Okay. Da. Okay. Fingers. Da. Right? That's it. You can do that. It's easy. And then you just keep doing it with total focus. And gradually, suddenly, it speeds up. And then the body gets it. And then, you know, it's like a, um, an exponential growth curve. In the beginning, it's pretty slow. And we're talking five, 10 minutes of the whole practice session here, where you go from being a total moron at this, and then, hey, ba, da, da, ba, da, da. And now you got it. Ba, da, da, 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 right? And then suddenly, where did I put my pig? I put it right there so it could fall down when I was done. Um, and then suddenly you're playing. And what you discover once you start playing it, that it's natural to have your 16 notes in your hand here. So the first three is downstrokes, as I said. The next three is upstrokes, then it's downstrokes, and then it's upstrokes. See, it's like, how, what, what happens when one of our top players makes a mistake, rhythmically? What happens when I, when I used to make a mistake, it was because I was trying to do something, and then uh, I couldn't end it, because I lost the timing of it, right? I lost the rhythm of it, because I was really hearing something, but I couldn't play the ba-da, right? I couldn't hit that, because I hadn't practiced it. And so I hit a wrong subdivision in compared to what was in my head. And then there's the dissonance of that. And then boom, you're out of it, right? But when a top player plays something that isn't right, then it's immediately heard as inspirational, right? So the music goes by and you go. And then that, that, that wasn't intended, but it, it came out wrong. But then as you hear it, you can hear, that's also music. If you, you know. And then you can continue your mistake, which was out of time, but still in time. Because you master uh, every 16th note, every triplet, and so on, right? Also, rhythm is pretty simple. It's either e even or odd. You got this four divided beat in 99% of the, unless you're playing waltz, right? Right, we have three. But either it's, it's, in is one two three four or it's one two three 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 four one two three four and sixteen notes is the same as eight notes when it comes to your skills same as thirty second notes right uh, it's just a matter of 
of either it's an odd or it's an even, even it's triplets like ba da 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 or six tuplets, right? Uh, it's just doubling up or doubling down really on each. So if you can master 16 notes and all the subdivisions and you can master triplets and all the subdivisions and you can take something and displace it in the bar like we've just been talking about, which you will learn if you learn Steve Vai's attitude song and you take it to twice the, the tempo because it's so easy. This is not luxury. This is what makes you sound like an absolute pro. And it's not that hard to learn. This is one of the secrets that nobody tells us because not, not only do we not learn the, the, the key skills that we need to learn in order for us to have every tool that we learn, like scales and arpeggios and all of that and techniques, in order to have all those things come together into some meaningful, we say, okay, you learn that, man, and I give you these licks and you learn these sequences, and then it's up to you. It's up to you to learn to solo because that's the creative part. That's the artsy part that I cannot teach you. Bullshit. Sorry to, I rarely swear, but that is such a lie. It's a cop out. It's just because you're not good enough, because you haven't looked at what are the skills that you need in order for you to get to that point where you can actually use what you are learning. And this is one of them. This is one of the hugely important one. Rhythm is an overlooked part. And it's, it's because one thing is that we don't teach these skills. Another thing is that we prioritize the skills we learn in a completely perverse way. As I said, I know, I'm, I'm not provoking by saying that you, that when you learn the first position, minor pentatonic, you should stop there and then go to rhythm. Because with rhythm, you can use that, you can learn 80% of soloing and then everything becomes luxury on top of that. But playing fast, the techniques, the phrasing, the everything. But you can make so much happen with just those five notes and then rhythm skills. And if you don't have the rhythm skills and you cannot do rhythmic displacement, because you haven't learned Steve Vai's song, then you cannot solo. And you can learn from here for 30 years of practicing. It will sound like absolute amateurish, boring stuff. So I hope you, I motivated you to look into this. And I hope you are willing to go back and say, I'm just going to scrap the whole thing and just focus on this attitude song so I can learn. Right? And then move on and learn more rhythms and, and see if I can go. And if there's anything you cannot play, you should be, what was that? I couldn't play it. I stumbled. What was that? Okay, let me see. What was it? And then you, 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 you decipher it down to what we just did, like da, 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 ba, da, da, and figure out where is the beat compared to what I wanted to play. And then you practice that because you want to kill it. You don't want to have anything that you cannot play rhythmically. Seriously. I'm not talking about Indian poly rhythms and all kinds of fusion-like advanced stuff, but in 99% of the music we hear, we should be able to play any rhythm. And last little point here. If you're at a concert and you cannot clap as you have your pulse, any rhythm that goes on in the guitar, in the singing, right, in the drums, in the keyboard, if there's something that you cannot clap, then you cannot enjoy it fully. You cannot enjoy it fully. It's just going to be a sound wall for you. It's just going to be, hey, that sounds great. But if you cannot, if you you cannot have the main pulse in your body as you hear it and you know exactly on an intuitive level where to place every single little beat or note in the music, then you are deprived from the full experience of the music. It's just like it is in our Western culture. And so, but that's a negative way of looking at it. The positive way is that when you do master rhythm, you'll have a completely different, um, different approach uh, or enjoyment when you hear music. Simply, just a fact. And I hope this was, uh, I hope I've, uh, I've, I've motivated you to really, and if you do uh, are very good at rhythm, just go and master it completely. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel and uh, hit the bell icon and then you can download a free course on alternate picking just below in the description here. And then I hope to see you in the next video.